Hey guys, welcome into the Hook Reborn channel. We are back with another top five named weapons of the week. And today we have two new weapons that have breached the top five. Yes, two of them. It's going to be fantastic. I will say, however, uh, if you'd like to enter a weapon in the description below, you can check out the different ways and links how to get to them. The number one link right now is going to be Discord. If you want to join, that'd be fantastic. At least you can leave a uh, weapon there so I can showcase it. And then finally, I want to give a quick deal to the rules. Pretty much no Legends mod, no mods that modify the weapons even stronger. And finally, uh, it has to be currently updated with Blazing Desert's DLC. The reason is because weapons have been updated since uh, prior DLCs. So without further ado, let's get into number five. Number five. Number five is the infamous Gate Crusher. Oh my gosh, if you had a gate around your head and I bashed your head in, everything blew up went into your brain your brain's gonna start seeing things it's gonna get some crazy natural powers or you're just gonna be tartar and people are gonna be like why is that guy drooling nonetheless we have this beautiful weapon i want to give a shout out to snuck thank you for another weapon another submission this guy has got weapons coming out his butt it is fantastic a little weird but doesn't matter let's get into what makes this thing tick starting out the effectiveness against armors where you have to look everything else is basically the same except for the effectiveness against armor when you hit somebody you're going from you're going up from 185 up to 204 good 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 night that's 19 extra uh, armor damage these weapons are meant to destroy armor and if you can do a lot of damage into the health on top of that you're just doing morale checks you're just doing uh you're doing dav cool's work upon the land and that is the main thing here but what makes that even more dangerous the mastery that you can get with two-handed pole hammers or hammers in general rather you get that extra boost to effectiveness against armor now i will say also the next part that goes up you go from a chance to hit on the head from five to 25 percent that's 20 extra percent chance to hit the head every time you hit something you're getting a quarter to chat to to pretty much scramble the brains so you gotta love that if you do have headhunter with this weapon the first strike boom heads already obliterated second strike if it has any more armor left it's gone heads popping it's all great but nonetheless let's get into number four number four number four is sven's the hyena's shower what what the hell does that even mean why is sven showering these hyenas Hyenas are meant to tear you up. Oh, wait a minute. So is this bad boy. Aussie D, thank you for this submission. I'm very happy that you could show me this one. I will say it's hard to kind of see, guys, so I'll give you the stats as best as I can. Starting out, this is a three-headed flail, and it does a damage to from 39 to 97. That is really high for flails uh, compared to the 30 to 75. Okay, so you get a nine jump on the baseline, and then you're getting that extra so what? Sw sw sweet boost to 23 extra top end damage holy crap that's a lot of damage that's a lot of good stuff right there but it doesn't stop there when you use this weapon in general you know that you're blowing through a lot of fatigue you have to drop that fatigue down it doesn't just happen with the mastery it happens with the buildup of fatigue being dropped to two less that's what this weapon is offering here so when you do hit somebody with that mastery you're effectively going to be going down to about 10 fatigue per strike that is beautiful that's what you want and on the duelist this thing's gonna totally pop 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 some eyes and i'd love to see that happen i will say however uh no boost in other areas and the three chances to hit does kind of bring up the three pack of a hyena attacking you but nonetheless this is a beautiful number four number three Number three is Cell Swords Orc Slayer. Oh yeah! I mean, if I want to kill the world of young orcs, their little babies are like, wah, wah. That's them crying. I'm gonna take them out with this thing. Man, mass genocide over freaking orcs is beautiful. I don't hate them that much, but you know what? It's still great to know that I have a weapon that can truly tear the competition. I imagine Conan holding this thing up going, yeah, you know, or I think of Link taking on the land for Zelda. It's too good. It's too good to be true. Thank you, Puggo Reborn. That's me, of course. This was picked up in our latest playthrough, Blazing Deserts, uh, the, the Blazing Hydra. So if you want to check that out, got to do a little bit of advertisement there. But nonetheless, let's get into what makes this weapon tick. Okay, for starters here, the main damage is getting a massive, the baseline damage, massive boost. 
So a great sword in itself does 85 to 100 damage. This bad boy does 103, so that's three over the top end for a normal great sword, and it's 18 extra damage on the baseline. To 121, that's 21 extra top end damage that is going to rip up people. Nonetheless, when you look at the the uh, next percentages not changing between uh, ignoring armor or effectiveness against armor, the baseline boost, or not even the baseline boost, the the pure damage boosts everything else. So put a boost behind those as well because that's what it's really doing. And then finally, a plus 23% chance to hit the head, that's 18 extra jump from five on the normal great sword. This thing makes a great sword fart itself in bed and then uh, sits underneath the covers. Uh, yeah, it's disgusting. The thing is to, I wanna say, the final key to this weapon that makes it even better with those AoEs that you know we all know great swords are great for, you're going from the durability of 72 up to 91. Got to love that, solid weapon. Thank you, Pogo, love you so much, I love you too. Anyways. That is worthy of a number three. But before we get into number two, I gotta ask for that like and a subscribe. If you do enjoy this content, please help it grow. It is kind of a piece of crap, but you know, at the same time, I don't want to be mixed up with the likes of Bono. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that is a South Park reference. Let's get into the next one, number two. Number two. Number two is Sir Agnes's Slayer. Oh yeah, you go up in the north. You go up the north and you don't want any of those stupid, stupid rusty blades and crap. And you want to, you want those clean cuts. You want that overhead strike. You want them bones cracking, skin popping, boil slopping, beast decapitating madness of an axe. You want to make a shrat shat shat itself. <laughs> this is the weapon. Yeah, I don't know where I come up with this stuff. Nonetheless. This weapon is sick, and I gotta say, between one and two, these guys could have easily flip-flopped. I had to actually pull up named weapons to actually to make a final decision on how good these weapons actually are in the long in the long run. So I want to get that out of the way. It's very it's A1 A2. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the next two. But nonetheless, let's get back into it. Thank you, Captain Veja Vaya. You. I don't know how you say it. I tried listening to the thing and it, it was tough to I couldn't really I, I, I suck at names Okay, but when we talk about a Bardiche, we're talking about what what is it good for? It's an axe It does an overhead strike that can hit to the front and the back. It's a beautiful weapon. It's a strong weapon It's one of my favorites personally, but I gotta say when you look at the damage on a normal Bardiche being a 75 to 95 damage category this thing already shatters that at 96 baseline so you're already going to get the top end damage nonetheless, which boosts again all the other stats. But then your top end goes up to 122. Oh yeah, so that's that's really freaking devastating in itself. I mean, really, you are devastating whatever it is that you're hitting, and in an overhead strike, you're even more effective with a chance to hit on the head. That crit and everything else that comes with it is just nasty. So then, look at the next part. We're getting a boost in ignoring armor. You're going from 40 up to 50 freaking two. That is, oh, that is just, I'm gonna say nasty a million times, but it's so true. I mean, really think about this. Most of the time you're gonna do 100 damage. If you get up to that 52 mark, you're gonna do 50 ignoring armor damage. And if you hit that 22 mark, you're up over 60. So seriously, guys, so much to consider. And then of course that effectiveness gets armor staying the same at 130 still for freaking fantastic again so thank you thank you for the submission this one makes me drool let me know what you guys think about this one in the comment section below let's get into the big one number one and now the one you've all been waiting for number one number one is the vulture's meat axe oh that just sounds disgusting doesn't even make any sense first off meat axe what it's a cleaver second off vulture's meat axe that is just a terrible image so i'm going to change this up for you Imagine seeing a healthy ox of a man, and there's vultures flying around him. You better run. You're probably gonna die. Hide your kids, hide your wife, you're dead. That's just how it goes, okay? This thing is going to cut you up in such fine little sliced up pieces, and you're not even gonna know what hit you, because it's that quick. It's going to take two strikes in one turn, and make you feel dirty. Whew. Nonetheless, I want to give a shout out to Florent. I've been saying his name wrong. I said Florent. <laughs> Definitely not Florent, it's Florent. 
So thank you for the submission. You definitely earned this one at number one. I will say some of you guys are going to have some questions about this one. Please, in the comment section below, let me know what was better, number two or number one. They were very close hairline differences, and I'll tell you what now. So the damage itself is going, it's going up from 65 to 83. What? That is a lot of, that's a lot of moo, 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 goo, goo, goo. Good jump. That's 18 extra bottom line damage. And the top end of a normal scimitar, two-handed scimitar, is 85. So you're going from 85 up to 109. That's 24 extra damage on the top end. Nasty. Then that damage altogether, the pure damage actually boosts all the percentages, and you're getting a percentage boost in ignoring armor from fifth, or I'm sorry, 25 to 39. That is dirty. That's a fifth or 14 boost percentage to try to get ignoring armor. Now, let's have the real discussion here. While the numbers are out there on the table, you might say, well, the last one had more damage and more ignoring armor, more effectiveness against armor. But this thing can attack twice, doing more damage if you hit both, of course, I understand that. But also when I had to when it comes down to that, it comes down to what is the the what how close was it to the named the top end named weapon that you can actually get the highest rolled setting that you can get and it was within two for pure damage from the highest that you could possibly get and three from ignoring armor this is almost the top end rolled freaking cleaver can't say nothing bad about that but uh, definitely worthy of Florence number one so thank you for the submission guys please once again remember in the description below you can find a way to send your picture of course i'm willing to look it up check it out and get it on the channel so without further ado thank you hit the like subscribe and i will see you in the next one bye